Good morning and my apologies for the delay. I'm actually unwell. Anyway, let us begin with our presentations. So is our friend Rudra Murthy here? Ha! Ah, the finalist job. So why don't you... Good morning everyone. My name is Rudra Murthy. Today I'll be sharing my views about the TED Talk, Why Insist on English. This TED Talk was delivered by Patricia Ran. Patricia Ran, she is an English teacher by profession who moved to Dubai around 30 years ago. She has seen various cultural and linguistic changes. And in this talk, she raises an important concern about language loss and globalization of English. So before moving to la language loss, she recalls an incident where one of her colleagues who teaches English to the adults takes them to the garden to enrich their vocabulary. But what happens is the teacher, she learns the Arabic names of those plants, their medicinal uses, their cosmetic uses. So how did they get this knowledge? So they might have got this knowledge from their grandparents. And how did their grandparents get this knowledge? So that must be from their great grandparents through their language as the medium. So when a language loses, we don't know what we lose because there's a wealth of knowledge which is embedded in it. And we might be inaccessible to that wealth of knowledge. And at the other extreme end, we have globalization of English. Could there be a connection between these two? We don't know. Let's see what she answers. So why is the world moving towards English? She tries to answer it. So what she says is, according to the world's latest university rankings, the best education is to be found in the universities of the UK and the US. So in order to get admitted to these universities, one has to pass a test. And that test is based on linguistic barrier. So it makes sense to have a linguistic barrier if one needs to get admitted to a school of MBA or school of law. But oh, valid it would be to reject a person solely based on his linguistic skills if he wants to get admitted to a chemist, uh, chemical sciences discipline or an electrical sciences discipline. And the other uh, reason for globalization of English could be most of the research now is conducted in English. She calls this a self-fulfilling prophecy. So she questions what happened to the translations where people translated text from one language to the other. And we are not seeing such translations now. So it doesn't make sense to reject a person solely based on his linguistic skills. Let's not put this linguistic barrier. And also she is not against English, which is seen in our talk. She says that the world requires a global knowledge. And we have chosen English to be our global language. But we need to define a boundary. It shouldn't end up being that English is the global language and just we have an handful of languages. Because there are various other languages existing in the world and we don't know what knowledge has been encoded in them. So we need to preserve those languages to extract the traditional knowledge which is imbibed in it. So she concludes the talk by giving a message, let there be an harmony between English and other languages. Let's not completely uh, give priority to English and neglect our languages. So we shall give equal priority to English as well as our, our languages. And coming to the critic aspect of the talk, so I'm in tune with whatever she says and I don't have much thing to contradict whatever she has said in her talk. Thank you. So he does not have much to say about the talk, nor does he have much to contradict. But any strong views from the rest of the class based on what he said about English and other languages? We should be concerned with this topic, right? We have 17 major languages of the world spoken here. And some people claim that the emergence of English as the only language being emphasized by everybody causes a danger for smooth progress of other languages. Is that true? Or there is no such danger? How many of you come from areas where 
English is not routinely as a matter of social exchange. So some other language is spoken. Whatever Hindi, Marathi, Telugu, etc. So what is your opinion based on the TED talk that he presented briefly? What is your opinion about the emphasis on English in India? Would it cause harm to Indian languages or it would not matter? Or something special needs to be done? Okay, so let us use the think, pair, share and try to resolve this issue because I would like you to consult with each other. So talk to your neighbors, three or four people, next two minutes. Uh, and, and don't do it as a part of an assignment. Do it as if you are, you are deeply concerned with it. Discuss this. You can discuss this in not very loud voices, but discuss it with among, among your friends. The issue is that are Indian languages in danger of getting extinct over next 100 or 200 years if this emphasis on English continues? Okay, so some discussion has happened. Uh, have you reached any conclusions? Some conclusions. So let's let's begin from the other end, and let's have the conclusions heard one after another from each group. Please tell us your name, and any one of you can speak. You can tell all the three names, and then speak. Uh, Hi, I am uh, Karan Punamia, uh, Sopnil Gosani, and Shashwat Rohila. Uh, the discussion we were having was uh, 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 while, while it is essential for a global language to exist, uh, so English serves as a medium for uh, uh, speaking to the global mass as such. But uh, in, in, in this case, what is happening is the languages that we have, the uh, current uh, uh, major languages that we have, we are ignoring those languages because we see profit in learning those uh, the global language and there is not much uh, we can we can gain by l learning uh, the languages that we have like uh, we were discussing regarding sanskrit so uh, while a few a few selected mass of people are are uh, have knowledge in sanskrit but uh, majority of the people don't approach sanskrit because th there is nothing that uh, we have one there is there is not much that we can gain by knowing something in sanskrit so, uh, because of that, uh, what is happening is that uh, we, we are losing out on a very major chunk of uh, literature that we already have in Sanskrit and uh, not ma many of the many, many people in India are not able to comprehend what exactly they are trying to say. So, in this case, and uh, there, are, there are certain older languages like Pali, Ardhamagdi, in which we have ve a very large amount of literature that that the, th those languages are not uh, not spoken at all uh, in India as such na nowadays. So uh, that that uh, literature, that amount of information that our ancestors had collected, those are practically rendered useless now. People are just uh, reciting it as as it is, but then they they actually don't know the meaning of majority of the text that they are reading. So. Uh, what we were discussing was that uh, uh, learning English is not bad. You you need to learn a global language. But uh, apart from that, there should be some focus on uh, learning and usage of the local languages that we speak. You can see that they have carefully chosen languages which are practically dead socially. Sanskrit, Ardhamagdi, Pali are not spoken any actually wanted a comment on the existing Indian languages which are in large usage even now. So what do you think about Hindi, Telugu, Marathi, Tamil, Sindhi, Gujarati, Punjabi, Rajasthani? Yeah. So English uh, is a global language and it should be. 
but there is uh, i don't think there will be uh, any danger, danger in our, our national languages so if they are taught properly then apart uh, besides so with english our uh, global language so they the national language can also be taught simultaneously and the student curriculum sh should be maintained accordingly and one more thing we don't need to speak in english to teach someone in english so uh, we should uh, uh, talk in hindi or some national language only to so english should be enough to so that the person can communicate anywhere else it should not be taught as hard as we think okay what is your opinion friends who would like to speak on your opinion tell us your name my name is abhay gajbi uh, i have discussed with swapnil jaiswal and uh, vani uh, i would like to contradict with shashwat actually what i am saying today that parents totally communicate with their children in english yeah, yeah the means in cities so they do, don't know their native language and also they don't speak in hindi so i think that uh, our native languages are just dying and means slowly uh, even in small towns uh, that uh, children are uh, means uh, they are given the knowledge of their native language and then uh, in schools they are taught with uh, while uh, means translating the words means it's proper but in bigger cities like mumbai and delhi they means uh, communicate in english only that's a rather strong judgmental observation is it based on any proper statistics either collected by someone else or it's your feeling experience a uh, very good experience uh, how, what is the sample space you all learn statistics the experience you know agreed you go to the malls so how many uh, 1000 100 25 no 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 i am talking about something else i am talking about statistical significance of a sample size to reach conclusions what you say is important but is it true or is it based on the sample size which is not large enough to indicate statistically concludable uh, no so what numbers huh? uh, this is another that uh, we should be aware of because if we make conclusive statements either they should be based on a survey like for example uh, uh, what they call uh, poll outcome surveys now whether you agree with them or not they try to present it in terms of statistically significant figures but i'll tell you some surveys which have been conducted in smaller places and surveys which have been conducted particularly in large and small places amongst families which are economically not well to do families and these surveys indicate a very drastic trend where the families the parents believe that the only solace for their children to go up is to learn english and they forcibly put their children in english medium schools so in maharashtra itself for example a large number of marathi schools are either closing or there are no students and a large number of english schools have propped up where there are large number of students and yet they are extremely poorly coached because particularly because their families cannot converse in english and their families are unable to give the language support which is required at home when the children are studying that language which never happens with native language because people speak in native language. so this is this has been shown to be statistically true and that is where we say that the danger is that contributions to the indian languages in future which comes from the society you see authors poets etc don't fall from the sky they come from the same society so if that society does not indulge in educating their children into their native languages sufficiently well then there is a danger that contribution to that language might over a long period die so i personally dread the future where uh, as you, as they mentioned pali ardhamagdi and sanskrit which are socially related languages should that same thing happen to 
हिंदी तेलुगु तमिल बंगाली गुजराती आई डू नॉट नो फॉर्चुनेटली वी विल नॉट बी अलाइव टू सी दैट टाइम बट देर इज देर इज अ प्रॉब्लम एटलीस्ट एज फार एज द स्टैटिस्टिक गोज द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज दैट वाइल इंग्लिश इज इमर्जिंग एज अ ग्लोबल लैंग्वेज एंड practically everybody in every nation and society attempts to learn english but in the western societies and in the developed countries this is not happening at the cost of their language. this is not happening at the cost of their language for example you go to japan you go to even a slightly underdeveloped country like turkey okay or you go to france germany or russia practically entire education and the dialogues between parents and children continues to be in their native language the writings even of scientific findings continue to be in their native language they learn english only to ensure that globally they remain competent if they take up any job or if they have to interact with the global population but this is consciously being done by those countries perhaps some of us might like to think that some such strategy where a a very good and strong support for the indian languages plus an adequate training in the global language perhaps could be the best combination anyway i speculate our friends here you don't have any opinion i do sir but uh, your uh, name sir my name is murugesh mohanan uh, to start with i will state my opinion that no country's example can be taken as a precedent for india there is no other country which has the language diversity that we have and my second opinion is that the greatest danger to any indian language is not english but another indian language indian language the strongest culture im- imperialism in our country is from people who would like to get one single common language as a national language let it be hindi or let it be something else it's not english that is problem here it is ourselves that's all i think very wonderfully spoken and very bluntly spoken have you realized the truth of what he is saying that the danger to indian languages is not from an external language like english but from other languages and parochialism parochialism that you see sometimes amongst people i do not know but when i was a student there was a huge wave in the north in the city of indore where i studied where any uh, uh, what you can say uh, a notification in language other than hindi was black painted and so on and there was a counter wave in tamil nadu where anything that was painted in hindi or any other language was black painted so th- these kind of problems are perhaps greater problems for us and the second and most important point is that we cannot take any other nation as an example for us because simply there is no other nation with this kind of diversity so we we'll have to figure out our own ways of solving problems thank you what did your group discuss i think you asked uh, whatever it is sorry nothing much to add i yeah, agree with murugesh point that yeah it's and i don't feel like uh, anyway our region language is going to be killed off that soon anyway no, 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 not that soon i'm talking about 200 years yeah maybe yeah so <laughs> but yeah <laughs> we can't really predict about that <laughs> right now that's what i feel so he does yeah yeah murgi yes will the english of today be the english of 200 years no english so english 200 years ago was not english uh, today and english uh, 200 years later will not be english today languages continue to evolve but as somebody mentioned the literature in those languages okay continues to thrive and continues to be enjoyed by people all over the world and it is the continuous contribution to the literature which actually keeps the language alive in some sense so that was the only uh, reason i mentioned that continued contribution to the languages not from scientists and researchers necessarily alone but from other people who use the language and who relate to the language users so that that should not fall down below certain level that is it so uh, for example i will i will suggest one thing uh, how many of you have known of tirukurals kurals anybody heard of them you never read them 
There are English translations available. There are Hindi translations available. Tirukural used to be compulsory learning in Tamil schools at least 50 years ago. I do not know now. Oh, now also. Okay. Uh, the wisdom that is exhibited in those beautifully constructed stanzas is none less than anything that you find in either Gita or Bible or anywhere else. In fact, some, some of the things that you you might consider it. There is a beautiful book written by Srinivas, the CEO of, ex-CEO of 3i Infotech, on the observations in Kuras, which are meaningful for modern management. Modern management. Now I can see some interest in the eyes of people. You might want to read that book. Now the point is, what exactly is the equivalent of those Kuras that has been constructed in Tamil in last 50 years later. Of course, such constructions are very rare. Gita was written only once, for example. What equivalent has been written in any other language is doubtful. People have translated Gita. So people have translated Kuras. But what I meant was that the contributions of that magnitude continuously being attempted by the authors and people in different languages. So that, that, that was the context. Okay. You have some observation. Uh, hello, my name is Vivek. <coughs> uh, I will give you example of my nephew. Uh, he is studying in English medium, but uh, he can speak Gujarati also. But I have seen he has trouble in reading and writing Gujarati language. So I think uh, probably after 100 years, maybe our native language will be spoken, but not. It, it will be uh, yes uh, again this is a rather small sample size one person but this sample size is significant because he is relating to a close observation amongst people of his own family and I think many others can relate to similar instances. By the way, in Mumbai city, the big city, somebody mentioned, it is absolutely correct that in big cities, uh, many people, take Mumbai, for example, which is a conglomerate of practically speakers of all major languages in the country. And yet you will find that there are many children who can speak their language, who can probably read their language, but who may not be able to read comfortably in their language. So this is already happening. I think that, that's an important observation. Okay. Let's go to the group of girls who were arguing very vehemently as I could see them. Any observations? Nobody wants to speak. Uh, actually, I have read somewhere, somewhere that uh, the language we speak affects our, uh, affects the way we think. So, affects our thoughts. So, means every language has its peculiarities which uh, reflects the culture or the all or the value base which are on which we are based on so if uh, one generation is uh, impo uh, uh, is uh, trying to uh, make their ch uh, children to t teach english uh, by pri prioritizing english and not taking care and not taking care of uh, teaching their native native language to them then they should uh, be aware that they are depriving them of thinking in the way their culture is or uh, means they will not be that much close to their base you know that much close to their values and i think which is important for our progress there is one question that i would like to raise do we all agree that whatever be the state of affairs any language whether it is indian language or global language that is being used by people the language better be used correctly that do we agree, all of us? That the correct usage of any language is important, whether it is global language or our language. And therefore, we should be concerned whether the children of the next generation wrongly use a language, whether it is English or Gujarati or Marathi or Tamil, it doesn't matter. But should it not be important to emphasize that whichever language you use, you use it correctly? I think that much is a common conclusion. Right. Say that it is correct or wrong. For example, Kathiawadi or Kachi. 
So he is pointing out another important issue. There are dialects of the language. In fact, people say that languages change every 20 miles. Okay. And dialects do exist. Just as we have diversity of the majorly used languages, we also have a lot of dialects of all of these languages. And as he points out, he claims that Rajasthani is not a language, but it's a dialect which is a spoken language. Okay. Many of the languages in the north, incidentally, which use Devanagari to write, may not have their script, but it may not be exactly correct to say that there are, these are not full-fledged languages. Kokani does not have a script, for example. But it's a fairly well-established language, perhaps emerged as a di dialect of something. But this is a problem on which uh, uh, does anybody have an opinion? What happens to the dialects? Is it that one of the dialects becomes a, a mainstream language, whereas the other dialects sort of survive around it? Is it that dialects, because they not much written material, have a danger of being extinct because there is no written literature in that? <coughs> if that was so, then Marwadi would not have been spoken in nooks and corners of the country, more or less in the same way in which the Marwadi is spoken in Rajat, carried by the families, but it's a spoken language, not written language, as, as you point. So that's another dimension of, of dialects. Okay, anyway. Uh, there, is, there, is a, there are places near uh, Tanjavur in Tamil Nadu where there are a lot of Marathi-speaking people. I was quite astonished to find that two of my colleagues in the Department of Computer Science had their mother tongue written as Marathi. One was Professor Ramesh, who has left us since then, but the other is Professor Sudarshan himself. Now, however, I tried to listen to the Marathi that they speak at home, and I couldn't figure out. It is not Tamil Marathi, it is Marathi still, but spoken in a completely different way. So, yes, yes, so he is now adding one more dimension, what happens to such languages or what happens to such dialects. Okay, fine. We'll have one more opinion from here and then that group and then we'll have to close. Mostly these are disappearing because we are uh, more on learning English and all those things. We are now not, I am Rajasthani, but I am not able to speak proper Rajasthani. Because my grandfather, my grandmother all speaks in Rajasthani. But what we have heard from childhood was, was a mix up of Rajasthani and Hindi. So we are not able to proper, to communicate properly in that language. So now means many things. As because of maybe media and education and all these things, we are involved in uh, more la much more languages like English, Hindi. So we are not able to speak any one language properly. Not Hindi, not English, and not our uh, Rajasthani and all native languages. She has a grouse that because of variety of circumstances, she is not able to speak any language well, whether it is her own mother tongue, whether it is Hindi, or whether it is English. Uh, let me let me tell you that such is the dilemma faced by a large number of people of both my generation and your generation. And what we should be concerned about is what happened to the next generation. So let's have one more opinion from this group here. Somebody would like to say. No, you at the end. <laughs> Sir, I think it is easy to say that we should do all this, but there should be a concrete incentive for people to do this. I mean, when you say that people have moved away from regional languages, there is a reason for that. There is some truth in the fact that people are finding use in English, learning English. So unless we incentivize learning their regional language, there is no point in idealizing all this. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, since you said incentive, I will say that uh, in Tamil Nadu, there is a rule that all students must learn Tamil. So. I don't know if uh, this rule exists everywhere, but the end in Tamil Nadu, it's like a shops. The first language, uh, the shop name should be written only in Tamil. The second only should be written in English or any other language for that matter. So the pe uh, it's more of like, peop uh, sometimes it feels like people are fanatic about their language, but uh, of course it also means that uh, your uh, language is deep rooted in still. Uh, it w that uh, now the language will not get eroded very soon. It's interesting that he mentions uh, compulsion 
Uh, by the way, most states have that rule. So in Maharashtra, for example, learning Marathi is compulsory. And uh, I know of a case, not now, but 35 years ago, uh, when a bright girl had come from Tamil Nadu, when she was in ninth standard, and she was surprised to find that she will have to appear for a Marathi, for her 10th board. She studied Marathi for one year. Uh, you can imagine that 10th standard Marathi would not be same as being able to just write oh, I, ka, ka, ka. She scored 74% marks in that Marathi paper. Neither that girl was extraordinarily bright or there was something terribly lacking in the way the 10th standard examinations in Marathi were conducted. Well, the latter was true, which she herself confessed. She could not write Marathi properly, but she knew the kind of questions which are asked. She could mug up answers to many of them. She could practice writing exactly those answers many times. And when the questions came appropriately in the exam, she could write those. Okay. So compulsion is not necessarily the only way to ensure this. Incidentally, about the signboards, in Korea there is no signboard that you will see which is in English. And it is not because of any compulsion. There is no compulsion there. In China, the Chinese equivalent of IAS examination, etc., are conducted in Chinese. They are not conducted in global language. And China is a larger global economic power than India even today. So it is not necessary that a global language must be adopted by the nation as a whole. For global interaction, you may need that language. In India, what is happening is people feel that knowing English is the only way out. You are talking about incentives or you are talking about compulsion. My contention is either need not work properly, perhaps a judicial combination might work. Consider this class itself. There is an incentive of having such discussions, presentations, learning the language slightly better and Therefore, that being useful to all of us. There is a compulsion that if you don't attend regularly, you will fail. Although there are no credits, they are pass-fail course. Now look at how a majority of the people who have interpreted this compulsion. Look at this entire empty desk here. And did you, I counted, there are exactly 35 out of 125 people present today. 35 out of 125. So what do we make out of this? Compulsions and incentives both have failed. Why? They have figured out that Patak is a lallu, he will eventually pass everybody. So I don't have to worry. Now once you reach that conclusion, then you quickly come to another conclusion that while there might be some merit in attending classes, there are more important things in life to be done, particularly at this time of the year. And therefore it is not necessary to waste one's time in getting up very early in the morning on Tuesday and slightly less early in the morning on Thursdays and come there. So this is the conclusion that even bright human being who qualified to join MTech and PhD program of IIT Bombay can easily draw. What do you expect from the lesser mortals in this society? Will they not reach their own conclusions like that? So whatever is the incentive and whatever is the compulsion, each human being and the family of a child is capable of evaluating those and they evaluate what is in the best interest of either the child or the family. And if the best interest is served by something else, for example, getting the children admitted to an English school, although there is no support system, so be it. I think that is what happened here. Yeah. This group here. Yeah, main point of my saying is that uh, if we uh, do study uh, in uh, our native language we uh, we can uh, get uh, what is the exact point of uh, study um, for any kind of material in less amount of time much much less amount of time and uh, com uh, comparative to english so it might uh, get speed up in progress if we see in terms of progress then we can uh, th th there will be uh, much uh, s speed up in the uh, progress in the research.
if uh, uh, we do research within our native language, we can do if there, if there are uh, inter uh, there are translators are present. Means we do uh, uh, our research in native language and uh, based on translator uh, translate it into uh, my, might be in English or other languages. Yeah, my name is Mahendra Kanani. I give my own example. When I study uh, so, um, uh, uh, sentence which are uh, uh, made up of two or three sentences, I have to read two or three times to understand what exact it want to say. When I uh, study in Gujarati, I have to only read only one, one time, only once. Quite unknowingly, he is probably telling us about uh, uh, the ease with which our own mother tongue is studied or learned when you, are, you learn to write. Uh, it is probably not because of anything else, but because of the fact that from your childhood, you were listening to the words and sentences being spoken in that language. So your mind was far more ready to understand that language when you first encountered it in written form. The same thing would happen in families where English is routinely spoken by everybody right from the child. So that is the importance of the language that is spoken at home when you're growing. Don't forget uh, the, uh, what, what Professor Prakash Vaidya mentioned about the development of human brain. The patterns are set very early for understanding those. Okay. Thank you. Bye.